Good Sunday evening, everybody. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onig with a new weather update for you for Sunday night. Things are, again, relatively quiet. It was a beautiful Sunday out there. Once the clouds and the rainfall finally got their way out of here, we saw a lot of sunshine across the Mid-South and looking like we're going to be seeing some pretty quiet, if not colder, conditions into the next couple of days. So a little bit of chill out there for us, but not really seeing a lot of major cool downs. At least we're not exactly talking an Arctic blast at this point in time, so that's always good news. We also see, again, the potential for a little bit more sunshine out there as we get into the course of the next couple of days, and we're looking, again, toward around the end of the week and possibly into around next week. We may be looking at not just one, but possibly two potentials now for winter weather coming on through. But, again, before you start getting out the snow shovel and getting things ready to go for your annual snowman building contest, just hang on a second because we have, again, some so semi-conditional phrases to talk about here that if one thing happens then another type of thing is not looking good for either situation but we will be talking more about what we may be looking for coming up here in just a little bit if you've never joined us before for our online video weather blog you don't have to stick around for the whole forecast again the information that you need for the mid-south is right here in the blue bar scrolling on by plus you can also get our exclusive seven to ten day forecast right here at this website wreg.com slash weather you can also get information about where you can find out information about how to train for severe weather with the National Weather Service in Memphis. Skywarn Spotter training sessions are coming up soon, and if you'd like to volunteer, we could use your help. And if you'd like to know more about that, again, wreg.com slash weather, and we'll be talking more about that throughout the next several days and weeks as we go into February, so stay tuned for more there. Welcome to everybody checking in from around the area tonight, Jackson, Tennessee. Oxford, Mississippi, Collierville, Somerville, Dyersburg, Brighton, all kinds of everything into and around the area for right now. Vicki Rutherford White, you'll never be able to kayak again. No idea what that means. Okay, thank you very much for sharing, though, for right now. Thanks to everybody else uh, for checking on through. Drop your location, and if you got a weather report, temperature or wind speed, if you've got that weather station for Christmas and you got everything hooked up, let us know what the weather is like where you're at. So drop your temperature, weather reports, and wherever you are located at into the comments section. And if you're from outside the Mid-South area, welcome to the show for tonight. We'll get you updated as to what's going on. We may be running a little late tonight thanks to the Grammys. We ran late with golf, so we might be on with the late edition of News Channel 3 at 10. But if you can't stick around for that, here's an update on your forecast for right now. It's going to be on the chilly side. Numbers across the Mid-South dropping into the mid to upper 40s at this time. We'll take a look at WeatherNet 3 in just a little bit to give you some live information out there. But right now, looking at dry conditions, the wind's a little breezy today. They'll be dropping on down to about 5 miles per hour or less into the Rest of the evening. So not seeing again a lot of wind out there, but it is going to be chilly. Temperatures by the time we hit the bus stop in the morning for the kids will be back in the 30s. So that's something to consider if you're going to be heading out the doors into and around the area. Sissy Neil Jernigan, hope I'm saying that right, getting snow in Dyersburg at the end of the week. We'll answer that question. Uh, take a look at everything else into and around the area. So thank you very much for that. Tona Smith voting for more snow. 45 in South Haven. Ashley Rose, thank you very much for that. That weather report, 49 in Forest City. Renee Vaughn Homewood, thank you very much. And 47 degrees in Corinth. Greg Younger, thank you very much for that. Let's take a look around the area for this evening. Live view of I-240, the westbound and eastbound lanes of Poplar. Looking back toward Park Avenue and the Quince Avenue overpass. Traffic in all directions at this time, moving along pretty nicely. Dry roadways, good evening for traveling. Visibility is no problem. We have very dry air in place across the area. Humidity level today we're in the lower 20% range. Just to give you an idea, when you're stuck in the Memphis summertime and you have the, the heat indexes out there and you're talking about humidities of 50-60%, very tropical sultry air, not even anywhere close to that. Some of the driest air we have seen in a while out there, so very comfortable and no problem with fog tonight from what it looks like, just too dry for anything like that. Looking back towards Sycamore View and I-40 and closer to around I-40 and Witten Road from our transmitter tower camera. 
good visibility out there and no major problems again with visibility with fog into the overnight hours. Catching a red eye tonight doesn't look like a problem for Memphis International. Green icon indicates delays at M Memphis International of 15 minutes or less, so everything is moving along quite nicely at this time. Steve Buckner, 52 in Horn Lake. Thank you very much. Olive Branch, 45. Vanessa Maxwell, thank you. Jamie McBride, one vote for Snowfall. Thank you very much for that. 43 in Blytheville. Tyrell McMahon, hope I'm saying that right, with the humidity of 76%. Cool. Winds, and thank you very much for those wind speeds out there, too. Very cool at this point in time. Don Garner, 50 inches of snow. No, not even close. Not even a, f a tenth of that from what it looks like for right now. But we'll talk more about that coming up here uh, in just a little bit. Bed. And votes for no snow coming in across the area. Uh, lovely DD, when is the winter storm coming? We'll talk about that in just a little bit. 46 in Clear and Eads, Jeff Livingston. Thank you very much for that one. 43 in Millington, Wanda Seward Betts. Thank you very much uh, for that. 44, Clear Skies in Blytheville, Winston Burton. Thank you very much for that. Take a look around the area for tonight. Storm Tracker 3S again. Humidity levels in the 20s. Not a good bet for anything involving rainfall. So we've gotten rid of all the showers as of early this morning. If you're in northeast Mississippi, between Corinth and Oxford. You had some showers left over this morning. Those made their way across the Tennessee River and just basically kind of did a good job of falling apart. There wasn't that much left of them. Now, watching for our next storm system, it's on the way, but it is way on off to the west of us over Port... You know, this used to be a great touch screen thing to where I could actually move this thing, but unfortunately it looks like it's having some difficulty. So excuse me for just one second while I do this manually. There we go. You know, it works the same, but it's just not the same wow effect of being able to go, wow, to sweep ahead with this. Anyway, looking at the next storm system coming on through here, me grousing about technology. Sorry about that. Looking back into the area around the Gulf of Alaska, large, mature, and very strong storm system. It's going to be sending a lot of energy into the West Coast states and eventually heading our direction. So this is part of what is going to be giving us our next storm system heading our way by the week's end. And that potential, again, does lead to the potential for the possibility of maybe some more snow out there. But again, it is looking a lot less likely at this point in time. We'll show you the computer model runs coming up here in just a little bit. Pretty mild out there. These numbers are pretty close to our normal high temperatures for this time of the year. So what you got out there right now that's typical highs, we actually actually made a few areas get up into around the mid to upper 50s today, so quite comfortable across much of the Mid-South area for earlier this afternoon and into this evening. Kathy Craig, 39 in Ripley, Tennessee. Thank you very much for that one. Thanks, everybody, for the uh, reports. Michelle Sneed, 47 in Bartlett. Thank you very much for that. Hickory Wyth, 40 degrees, very close to where my wife used to live. Trey Danzy, thank you very much for that one. Thanks a lot for that. Yolandria Cottrell Henderson, all seasons in one week. Nothing like a little variety, or in my case, what we call job security. Thank you very much on that. Again, for the rest of the evening, Looking at numbers through News Channel 3 at 10. Again, hopefully not on too late with the Grammys, but join us for all the day's news, weather, and sports coming up. Should be back in the lower 40s. Moving lines on screen showing the winds coming in from out of the north, northeast at about 5 miles per hour or less. Not looking at a lot out there. Daybreak tomorrow morning, there is going to be a minor disturbance passing on through just north of us. So Paducah, Cape Girardeau, Cairo might be picking up a bit of a snow flurry, but none of that expected to be anywhere close to northwest Tennessee, the Boot Hill, or northeast Arkansas. It will be chilly into tomorrow morning with temperatures in the lower 30s and warming up not that much tomorrow. By the time we hit lunchtime, dismissal time for the kids again right after that, mid to upper 40s at best. So a lot colder air spilling into the Mid-South. By News Channel 3 at 10 tomorrow night on either side of the freezing mark and then getting into around daybreak Tuesday much colder out there with, again, temperatures back into the mid to upper 20s across much of the Mid-South. So this is where we see, again, some very cold numbers for the kids getting out the door at the bus stop or you getting out for that early morning jog or stroll. That is something to pay attention to. With numbers like this, it's going to be very uncomfortable waiting out there for the school bus unless you're properly prepared. Yes, I know everybody should know about that by now, but it never hurts to remind people just again that this is what's coming your way, so just get ready for it and maybe have those scars 
scarves and the mufflers and the gloves and the hats and everything else ready to go just in case you need that extra layer out there before you head the kids out for the bus stop a little bit later on. Now, that's what we're seeing again for the next about 36 to 48 hours here in the Mid-South area. Looking ahead toward the end of the week, this is number one of possibly two storm systems. Note that I said possibly. We're not seeing again a great deal of confidence in this time frame. When it comes to winter weather, it's been diminishing over the last few days, and that's exactly what I've been telling people about. For those of you who 300 hours plus are looking down the line saying, wow, snow, blizzard conditions, all kinds of accumulations, and then all of a sudden this is what happens. So again, sometimes we'll see the numbers go up, but as of right now, we're just not looking at a lot of this time. So Thursday evening, if you tuned in this morning or last night, you saw a lot of snow accumulation going on here in southern Missouri, west Kentucky, and northern parts of the area just north of the viewing area into southern Illinois. Now, Thursday evening, again, we're just at this point in time. There's not that much going on out there. According to this latest model run, it looks like most of the activity, let me zoom back out here for just a second, is going to be going well to our north and to our east. Great Lakes over the Appalachians into around portions of the area close to New England. That appears to be the main target zone for now. And as you can see, right down around here, we're just not looking at too much of anything through Friday morning around the time the kids get out to the bus stop. There will be chances of rainfall and there will be some mixture of rain turning over to a rain-snow possibly sleet mixture depending on how cold it gets but right now the chances are according to these numbers a lot less than what they were just 12 hours ago so next couple of days we're going to watch to see what comes back our direction. It could change very easily. Now, that's number one. As we go a little farther into the forecast, toward about, say, Monday into Tuesday next, we start to see even more chances of snow showers start to make their way back to the north of us. And some of that could slowly make its way into and around portions of Middle Tennessee. But once again, this next storm system also appears to be aiming for the same place. So from the eastern Great Lakes all the way down the Appalachians into around areas north of Georgia, this appears to be the best possibility of snow for right now. I know that my wife watching from home and also her teacher compatriots from around the area are not happy about that. Again, I know a lot of teachers and students out there, especially the kids who would love to have another snow day out of this point in time. So this is something that could be, again, a nice opportunity for, again, getting out of school, but doesn't really look that way for the time being at this time. Samantha D. Reed. Rajap, Rajapski, hope I'm saying that right, milk and bread, that famous milk sandwich. Yeah, I always consider it kind of strange that everybody uh, wants to grab milk, eggs, and bread. I just think they, they're making French toast, but, you know, what do I know on that? So, anyway, for right now, not seeing anything in the way of potential. Samuel Ford, we do not know. Check back in 10 minutes. I prefer a couple of days, but, you know, you do what you want to on that for right now. Uh, what to expect on Groundhog Day. Mary Grisham, stay tuned for more on that for right now. And is South Mississippi going to have snow? Bobby Curtis Shehorn? Uh, not a lot at this time. If everything pans out the way that it's looking right now, I don't think we're going to be seeing too much of anything for Southern Mississippi at this point. So, now we're going to be seeing too much of anything else. Logan Ward, Memphis Weather Dome, stopping the snow. Yeah, my wife calls that the snow bagel. So it kind of does a pretty good job of stopping anything in the way of anything involving the possibility of snow heading our direction for that. What's up? You want, you, you want to say hi to everybody? Come on, come on over. Just watch, watch the cord. Okay. News Channel 3's Mike Sadie, ladies and gentlemen, busy day in sports, keeping an eye on things, and no Patriots fan from what I understand for right <laughs> oh, no, now. So. Far from it. <laughs> Super Bowl a week from tonight. Just want to just want to let you know, hardest working guy in meteorology. Yeah, you know, Getting it done. Hard, Getting it done. Hard, hardest working guy in sports, believe me. You should, you should hear the commentary rolling <laughs> off from upstairs when something goes wrong with the Dolphins' defense. It's it's not pretty. So. Not pretty, but you know I don't have to worry about Miami in the Super Bowl anytime soon. <laughs> I haven't been in a yeah. long, long time. But. You know, likewise, the Chiefs, unfortunately. But so. I like the weather this week, so I'll, I'll take it the way you got it. Yeah, there's a, one, one endorsement. I'll take what I can get on that. Okay. Mike Sadie, everybody. Thanks for stopping by. We see you again, again, from fairly quiet conditions out there for now into tomorrow. Tomorrow, this is where we're going to be seeing the cooler air 
making its way down and sticking around the Mid-South area. Kind of partly cloudy to mostly clear, varying back and forth between that into the evening hours. Uh, again, mostly clear skies for the most part out there for then. And then into Tuesday, even colder conditions. Not again an Arctic blast, but we see temperatures back into the lower to mid 40s. And again, fairly brisk out there with some breezes kicking up every once in a while. Now the winds turn back out of the south again as we go toward Wednesday. So that's why we see the temperatures heading back upwards again as we go toward Wednesday. Now getting into Thursday and Groundhog Day. Here's the setup that I'm thinking for right now. Going to be seeing chances of rain very late Wednesday evening, around about midnight. Showers across much of the area on Thursday. Too warm for anything but rainfall into and around the area. So again, this is where we're going to be seeing maybe kind of a soggy finish to the rest of the week. Then colder air with that first storm system makes its way on through. So by Thursday night, Friday morning, we see the temperatures drop to around freezing. So some of this could change over to some of this into the very early morning hours of Friday. But right now, since we're on the southern edge of this thing, as the system passes us to the north and we're down here, I don't really see us getting too much of anything in the way of accumulations. Yes, we'll get some rain mixed with snow. I don't think it's going to be cool enough to get it to stick around. Now, again, a lot can change between here and there. So, again, stick around for more information on that. Now, that's storm system number one. Things clear out. We go to about 40 degrees for a furry fake forecaster day coming up. And no, I don't want to get on my soapbox and to around the area for right now. Uh, Linda Schroeder, Memphis weather changes a lot. Difficult to predict. Give the weatherman a break. Well, that's that's the thing. And here's the thing also, and thank you very much, Ms. Schroeder, for, again, pointing that out. For those of you out there who are, again, a little, shall we say, critiqueful as to what goes on with the weather and how it is never perfect or easily predictable out here, I invite you. In fact, I urge you to try winter weather forecasting for yourself. I've done it. I've done it for many years. I studied it back at the University of Kansas as part of some of my senior projects. It is not an easy thing. This is my least favorite season to forecast for, and there's a very good reason for that. Winter weather, especially in this area of the country where you can get warm air coming up from the south or dry air coming in from the west, a lot of those things can interfere with these forecasts. And if you've never tried winter weather forecasting, you might want to hold off on flinging those stones through the glass house that you're in because if you've never done it before, it may, again, kind of shock you as to the difficulty that we see in some of these forecasts out there. And that's not excuses. That's just stating things the way that they are. This is, again, not the easiest season to forecast for. And if you'd like to post your predictions as to what goes on, as opposed to the typical joking, a thousand inches of snow, ha, ha, ha. Well, you know, you can do that if you want to. But again, I'm doing my best with the information that I've got here. And these are the latest updated models, the most accurate forecast models on the planet to help us plan these things out. If you'd like to give a forecast prediction and put it out there for everybody to see, go for it. In fact, I invite you to do so and see if you can get any more accurate than I can on stuff like this at some point in time. But again, if you want to put it out there, it's got to be in the public vein as ours are. Right now, I'm not, again, going for predictions of anything involving accumulations at this point in time because, once again, these things will change and it's only about 24 to 48 hours out that we can really give you with any decent accuracy what's going to be coming up. Can we see what's coming? Again, with an idea as to what's going to be coming our direction, sure. But again, there's too many variables at this point in time. And again, if you've never tried it, give it a shot. I guarantee you it's going to be one of the most frustrating things that you have ever tried in your entire life. Really? No, I'm not kidding about this. So give it a shot if you want to see something very unique and interesting at some point in time. Now, storm system number two, heading our way toward a true American weather holiday, National Weather Person's Day coming up Monday, February 5th. It's going to be chilly, and we could see some rain Sunday night next, cooling off right again, borderline close to freezing, to where we may see again some rain mixed with snow early during the day next Monday. Not tomorrow, but as we go into around a week from tomorrow, that's where we also see the potential for, again, the problem involving some more precipitation. So we've got one and two chances for right now, both of which are nowhere near impressive from what I can see. Now, we'll continue to monitor this, so the one thing you want to do is stay tuned to the weather 
experts and we'll keep you updated as to what's going on into and around the area for right now and we'll keep you again informed as we go throughout the rest of the week into and around the area with News Channel 3's Tim Simpson, Todd Demers and into and around the area of again getting you updated with this stuff happening as it changes so stick around for more on that plus we'll have an update on the forecast through the rest of the weekend on Country 92.5 and Oldies 102.3 and of course I'll be back on with Bob and Josh tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. for your forecast on AM 730 Yahoo Sports Radio Talk Back Live again mainly sports chat but they do a lot with current events and a lot of other chat around the Mid-South area if you can't get their signal in the Mid-South or beyond dial them up online at talkbacklivenetwork.org and a great opportunity to uh, chat with a couple of great guys and learn a little bit more about what's going on uh, in and around the Mid-South and points beyond. Todd Demers will be on bright and early tomorrow morning on Daybreak. That starts at 4.30 a.m., his complete updated forecast, which will include a lot more information about what's going on with these potential winter storms out there. Again, a emphasis on potential, and believe me, I hate making those quotation marks as much as you hate seeing them, but you get the idea. We'll have an update on the forecast again coming up tonight on News Channel 3. This is, again, where we give you an idea as to what's going on with the forecast for again tonight and again we'll have more with Kristen Holloway with the news and Mike City as you just saw stopping by a few minutes ago with sports so want to stay tuned for more there also again you get the details on the forecast at wreg.com slash weather and stay tuned for my forecast as well on my social media networks throughout the rest of the week and also at wreg.com slash weather if everything works and we have enough tinfoil on the Wi-Fi receivers we'll be doing another uh, forecast for you coming up including a look at weather where the troops are That'll be on my Facebook page at about 8.33 in about 10 minutes or so, maybe a little less. Stop by for more on that if you have friends or loved ones serving in the United States military. And we'll take a look at what the weather's doing overseas or right even here in the Mid-South. So again, good opportunity to see more about that. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Thanks to everybody for dropping on by. If you'd like to find out more details into and around the area for the forecast, we'll have more on News Channel 3 at 10. And of course, throughout the rest of the week with the rest of the severe weather experts crew. Stay tuned for more with News Channel 3 on air and online. And thanks for joining us tonight.